Well, Donald Trump's statements are not only extremely racist, they're extremely ignorant. Uh, he has no sense, uh, very reflective of the American populace in general. We really don't have a sense of Haiti's true history, nor El Salvador, nor the entire continent of Africa for that matter. And to call Haiti an, an asshole is to be ignorant of really a century plus of U.S. Uh, mistreatment and exploitation, invasion, and occupation of Haiti. Of course, twice, just in the past two decades, uh, Jean Bertrand Aristide, the president-elect of Haiti, democratically elected, was twice ousted and deposed by the U.S. government. So there's really just uh, so much history that we should be made aware of before we ever judge. Well, at this point, uh, we can't put anything past Trump in terms of how low he'll sink in terms of insulting the international community. Um, and again, I think it serves us well to take this uh, moment of, of ignorance, not just to decry racism as the liberal media, CNN and MSNBC has, but to revisit U.S. foreign policy towards Haiti this oft-repeated cliché that Haiti is the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere is not true. Haiti is a very rich country, and for this reason has been punished. A more accurate statement would be that Haiti is the most exploited uh, country in the Western Hemisphere, the most punished and blockaded country since the 1804 Haitian Revolution. Um, the slave-owning countries at that time and the colonial powers today, their successors, continue to fear Haiti and the bravery and resistance of the Haitian people. The United States government is increasingly isolated. Um, even the U.S. ruling class itself is divided. To have a figurehead, a representative like Trump, who represents the very worst of the United States, the worst forms of chauvinism, sexism, and homophobia, and xenophobia, and of course, as we see on full display now, racism and white supremacy, this is very bad for the U.S. internationally. Who can take the U.S. seriously when in the maximum, in the very summits of power, we have a president who is completely ignorant of international affairs, who doesn't know the first thing about El Salvadorian or, or Haitian history? So, yes, it is very damaging to the reputation of the U.S. That's what we're seeing. We're really seeing the decline of the U.S. empire. We're seeing a China that is uh, expanding economically and politically across the world. Of course, that's the U.S.'s greater fear, greatest fear. Um, they want a unipolar world, which spells U.S. domination. Multipolarity with a strong China and a strong trading bloc between the BRICS nations or the ALBA nations in, in Latin America. Uh, a Russia that can compete economically and militarily with the U.S. The U.S. is going to demonize and vilify uh, any other country that dares to challenge it in the international scene. Unfortunately, Trump's base, the 63 million uh, people who voted for Trump, mostly uh, working class and poor white voters, they themselves have been so thoroughly indoctrinated um, with white supremacy, with racism, um, they don't have a sense of international politics, so they were able to be duped by this uh, demagogue in chief by Trump. So I think really it's upon us in the, in the popular movements to go out and, and do educational campaigns and, and talk to our communities that the Middle East is not the enemy and Islam is not the enemy and Haiti and in Africa and El Salvador and immigrants in Mexico, these are not the enemies. These are survivors of uh, U.S. foreign policy. Um, and again, uh, all these cliches that were fed uh, across this country that the U.S. is the greatest country in the world, uh, this is just not accurate. What would be more accurate is to say that the U.S. is the greatest exploiter in the world. And that's not an anti-American statement, that's an anti-injustice or an anti-imperialist statement.